want to try and tell the listener who has the puck, where he has the puck, consistently and accurately. You know, there could be 100 goals that your team scores, and they could all be scored 100 different ways. Every game, it's a new experience, which is why I think it's kept me going all these years, because I never know what I'm going to see next that I've never seen before in hockey. And a break, Kopitar in, shoots, and he scores! Andre Kopitar! There's a huge thing in having broadcasters that have been around for that long to be able to tell the stories. Hello, sir. Hi, Jake. How are you? Here in Los Angeles, you know, you look at the Chick Hearns, you know, the Vin Scullys and Bob Millers. Yeah, one of these days we'll get it right. When we talk about educating new fans on our team, what better way to tell a history than a person who's been part of the history? I probably wouldn't be here today if I hadn't saved a tape of one of my Ithaca College sporting events that I broadcast. I had one tape that I saved. It was a hockey game. And that was the tape I used to send in for the job in Rochester when I first started. I was born in Rochester, New York, which is upstate New York. I grew up in a broadcasting family. My dad was a disc jockey in Rochester, was on the air for 20 years. I really didn't know if broadcasting was something I wanted to pursue, but as I became a sophomore, junior, then a senior in college, I think my path was pretty well defined. My first full-time job out of college was uh, doing the Rochester Americans, my hometown team. Didn't move out of Rochester until I got my second hockey job in New Haven, Connecticut. The Kings were the New Haven Nighthawks farm team. And I get a call in early November from Parker McDonald. So Parker calls and says, Nick, the guy doing the games with Bob Miller is leaving. If you're interested, send me a tape and I'll get it to the right people. Parker said, I think you'll get along really well with Nick Nixon. He's a nice guy. Uh, you'll, you two guys will have a lot of fun. He's a good broadcaster. And uh, I think Nick sent some tapes and I said, fine, come on out. In Southern California, the only place to see Major League professional hockey is the Forum in Los Angeles. And here I'm 27 years old. I had never been west of Ohio in my life. <laughs> so you can, you can imagine what a culture shock it's going to be for this guy. On November 18th, 1981, I met Bob maybe in person three hours before the broadcast. I'm in the press room at the old forum and Bob comes in. My first impression was, this guy's got a lot of hair. Back then, I had never seen Bob do a TV game. I knew he was the voice of the Kings, but I had no idea what Bob looked like. And here we are, we meet for the first time, we're gonna go on the air as partners. It was an easy transition because number one, the Kings won the game, they won the game big, and Marcel Dion, one of the game's greatest talents, had four goals. Charlie Simmer, now in front, Dion shoots, he scores! Pretty much every game was radio only. And on the occasion that we did TV on Channel 9, I think my first few years, we only did 15 road games on TV. So it will be a simulcast. Nick Nixon back between periods of our King simulcast. And tonight, of course, marks the opening of the 1982 Stanley Cup playoffs. We always said this is a simulcast. So it's on radio and TV. So that when we went to a replay, if we said, here you see this or that, it wouldn't upset the radio listener who's saying, I can't see what they're talking about. And some of the stars are standing by right now to talk with Nick Nixon. <laughs> We're down here <laughs> in a little bit of confusion. We can't find a third stool. Bob and I worked together for nine years, and we were the broadcasting team for the Kings. Now Gretzky comes in 1988. Now to Taylor, to Gretzky, and he scores! And all of a sudden, there's a demand to see Kings hockey games. 
as many as possible. Gretzky back to Sandstrom in the zone, fakes the shot, now centers. A pass across by Benning to Gretzky. He scores! And they came to me and they said, Nick, we're going to give you the choice because you're, you've been with us. Do you want to stay and do color on TV? Or would you rather go to radio and do play-by-play? -play? It didn't take me very long to make that decision. Taylor cuts to his left, goes in the zone, puts the defense, and on goal, he shoots, he scores! Oh, what a great goal by Dave Taylor! That was his dream, to be a play-by-play guy, which was great. And so when, when they did split it up, it was a great opportunity for him, too, to do what he really wanted. I always felt that my strength was play-by-play. That's what I had done before I came out to L.A. Lane Taylor goes in the zone with room at the right circle. With a shot, he scores! He does a very, very good job telling you where the puck is. And that's what I always thought was important on radio. Top of the left circle, Gretzky leaves it for Blake. Moves in, Blake passes down low. Robitaille, a shot, he scores! Luke Robitaille set up by Rob Blake at the base of the right circle. He can carry the game in his voice. And even if you tuned in late, you can pretty much get a sense of where the game is at by listening to how he calls the scoring chances both for and against. The emotion in his voice, very seldom does it waver. A minute 53 left in the second. And Stumple wins the draw to Blake. Blake with a pass in front. Murray scores! He keeps you, you know, engaged in the game, whether the, you know, the team is down by five or six goals or they're up by five or six goals. You have to be blessed with some great pipes, and he does. He's got a great tone of voice, and it's very easy to listen to. Now Doughty has time and space, spins away from Hurdle. Because there's nothing worse than listening on radio, because there are no pictures. You have to have a voice that you want to listen to. And now a lead pass ahead to Kopitar, driving wide on Pronger and on goal. Shot, score! Andre Kopitar busting around Chris Pronger of all people. There's that knack that a good announcer has of the intensity, the excitement in your voice, and the anticipation. Brown races out to center ice, Brown into the zone, Brown to the net, Brown a chance, save is made, rebound, shot score! Matt Green! Even if you're in another room, you'd come in and look at the TV, if you had the radio on the other room, come in and look at the TV and say, oh, something's gonna happen here. It's Hall of Fame stuff, broadcasting Hall of Fame stuff. You don't get to last that long unless you are really, really good. And he is really, really good. I always feel like I'm getting better. I don't want to get stagnant. Once that settles in, it, I, I'll know it's time to, to retire. I've never heard Nick say, uh, you, know, this is, you know, this is getting old, this is getting tiring. Hey, and you're listening to the NHL Tonight on the King's iHeart Audio Network. When I step in the booth with him each and every night, it's, I feel like I'm a big sponge in there. I just want to you know, continue to keep absorbing different things. It's good to have something and hold on to it, right? If it's good, if it's good. <laughs> I'm really putting <laughs> you on the spot. Really That's why I'm really We came out to LA, as I said earlier, and I, I said to my wife, says, let's just give it a go. Let's see if we like it. And if we don't, we'll move back east. Two years became five, became 10, became 20, and became 40. To the right side to Foley with a shot. Save, rebound, score! Alec Martinez has won the Stanley Cup for the Los Angeles Kings. I know I'll never do a perfect broadcast. But if I'm prepared and if I'm accurate and I'm working at it and have the enthusiasm, I feel I can come pretty close to that. And that feeling you get when you do a job and finish a broadcast and you know you've nailed it, that's what sticks out to me. More so than a milestone goal by Marcel or, or Luke, the playoff games, Great, I mean, those are in a class by themselves. But for me, it might have been just a, a, an ordinary game where I had that feeling at the end of the broadcast. I've done my job and I hope the listener has been able to enjoy the work that we put into it. Beats it out up high to Dowdy. Dowdy across to Kempe, one-timer save, rebound, score! 
Dustin Brown.